There are a few typical electrical wiring problems that you should be aware of if you work with electrical wiring. Short circuits, shocks, and even flames can result from these errors. It's always a good idea to know how to spot these electrical wiring errors so you can fix them and prevent them from happening again. Stay tuned to find out some of the most common electrical mistakes that all electricians definitely need to avoid. Stay tuned for all the insider details. When you make connections outside of the box, despite the fact that many fires occur as a result result of poor wiring, you can avoid them by being aware of typical electrical wiring errors. This can assist you in recognizing and avoiding mistakes that could result in dangerous circumstances at your home or workplace. Junction boxes are used to protect connections from damage due to human error. Due to a faulty connection or a short circuit, you could potentially contain sparks and heat. To ensure that these wires are properly protected, they should always be linked to the electrical box. So, what's the the solution? Install a box and rejoin the wires inside it if you see a connection that isn't created in an electrical box. This is a very straightforward task that can be completed at home, and there are internet guides available to assist do-it-yourselfers. If you're unsure, you may wish to hire a professional electrician to complete the task for you. You cut the wires too short. You might assume there's nothing you can do to lengthen a wire once it's been severed. There is, however, a simple solution. On existing lines, you can add 6-inch extensions. Hardware stores and home improvement centers sell wire connections that are easy to install in confined spaces. So what's the answer? You might assume there's nothing you can do to lengthen a wire once it's been severed. There is, however, a simple solution. On existing lines, you just add a 6-inch extension. Hardware stores and home improvement centers sell wire connections that are easy to install in confined spaces. Starting a project without a permit. All electrical installations must be wired in accordance with codes that are based on safety requirements. When you work with a permit, you can rest assured that your work will be inspected and approved after the project is completed. The building department and inspector in your area are excellent sources of information. The first issue is that this project was completed without a permit by someone who was unsure of the codes that were required for this installation. The installer would have utilized acceptable methods and materials and avoided a lot of heartache and frustration in the future if he had obtained a permit and worked with the inspector leaving plastic unprotected. Another common error noticed in the electrical industry is leaving plastic unprotected sheathed cable. Cables with a plastic sheath that are exposed between framing members are readily damaged. In fact, the electrical code mandates that wire in these places be shielded. If cable runs beneath the framing of a wall or ceiling, it's extremely vulnerable to damage. So what is the solution to this issue? Nail or screw a 12-inch thick board alongside the exposed cable to provide protection. It isn't necessary to staple the cable to the board. If you're running the cable along the wall, a metal conduit is a good option. Replacement of fuses. This one may appear to be pretty obvious, but it's a common mistake in the electrical world. The safety systems of breakers and fuses protect the wire ampacity radians as well as the electrical flow to all connected equipment. When a fuse continues blowing, it's common for people to believe it simply needs to be replaced over and over, or that a larger fuse or breaker should be used. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, this is one of the leading causes of house fires, and replacing fuses on a regular basis is dangerous. If a fuse or breaker keeps blowing or tripping, there's a problem with the circuit wiring that needs to be addressed. Overloading the outlets One of the most common electrical errors is overloading power boards or outlets. Many adapters and power boards with multiple outlets may not appear to be a problem, but if a circuit is loaded with more amps than it can manage, the breaker is more likely to trip. When power boards and outlets are overloaded, with large appliances like air conditioners, refrigerators, and dishwashers, the risk increases dramatically. When it comes to the use of drop cords, electricians advise only using them if they have the requisite ampacity. Using incorrect sizes and fixing of wires and outlets. Using incorrect sizes and incorrectly fixing both wires and outlets are two more common mistakes that beginner electricians will make. The term gauge refers to the various sizes of available in electrical wires. Wires of various sizes are used for various operations and purposes, and the gauge of the wire also determines where it should be utilized. Overheating or a shorting of the fuse or circuit breaker might occur if the wrong 
strong size wires utilized for the electrical current. As a result, it's critical to utilize wire and devices that are rated correctly for the amperage they'll transport. Additionally, we've all seen outlets and switches that appear to be suspended from the wall. You can even have a few of these at your home or office. Outlets and switches in this condition are extremely dangerous. The wires can detach from their terminals when appliances are plugged into loosely fitted outlets, causing arcing and overheating. Installing cables without a clamp. Installing any cable without a clamp can be a tough job and also lead to some disastrous mistakes. The cable's not clamped, it might wander around and cause strain on connections. The wires brush against a sharp edge in a metal box, the installation can be cut. As a result, wires must be connected to the box using a cable clip that has been approved. Cable clamps are not required in single plastic boxes, however, the cable must be stapled within 8 inches of the box. The cable needs to be stapled within 12 inches of the box in a bigger box with built-in clamps. So what's the answer to this dilemma? Installing a clamp is a pretty straightforward solution to this problem. You must, however, ensure that the cable sheathing is trapped under the clamp and that about 14 inches of the sheathing is visible inside the box. Cable clamps are integrated into several boxes. If this isn't the case, you'll need to purchase the clamp separately and install them alongside the cable. Reversing cold and hot wires. When a hot wire is connected to a neutral terminal in an outlet, an electrical shock can occur, which can be lethal. Because the electrical system may function normally despite the unknown threat, you may not discover anything is wrong until someone is electrocuted. So what is the solution? The easiest and quickest solution to prevent this from happening is to be knowledgeable with the various colors of electrical wires, their functions, and how they should be connected properly. Here are some great solutions. Outlets and light fixtures should always have white wires attached to the neutral terminal. A silver or light-colored screw is commonly used to identify neutral terminals. The other terminals should be linked to the hot wires, not the neutral. The ground line will be a green or bare copper wire. Finally, connect the ground to the green grounding screw, a grounded wire, or a grounded box. And there you have it, everything you need to know regarding some of the most common electrical mistakes that all electricians should try their best to avoid. Now, mistakes on the job are inevitable in any profession. However, we hope these mistakes and solutions were helpful and something you keep in mind in the next job. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Did we miss any common mistakes and solutions? Which one was the most helpful? Let us know. But if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks for watching. If you're already an electrician running your own business or just about to start and grow your own electrical business, you must learn the four critical things electrical business owners wish they had learned before starting an electrical business. You don't make the same mistakes. Electrician Accelerator has put together a free training video you can watch for free right now. I will show you exactly how to start, grow, and build your electrical business the right way. You can consistently guarantee profitable work, free up your time, all whilst reducing stress levels and allowing you to have sustainable and more profitable business that works for you. In this training video, you'll also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth and referrals, how to stop competing on price with other electricians and escape your competition, how to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales, how to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will be happy to pay more. Click on the link on the description below the video.